Hey everyone, Ben here and welcome back to the channel. In this latest collaboration with Race Department, I want to offer some tips for cars to start your sim racing career in, and also hear from you in the comments about what your starter car of choice would be. Let me know if you agree or disagree with my picks. Now, in my experience, it's very easy to get immediately sucked into racing GT3 cars when you first enter the sim racing world. After all, one of the biggest and best sim racing titles is squarely focused on them and in many ways they represent a decent entry point for newcomers as well as those with some experience. But there is more to sim racing life than GT3s and actually, if that's all you drive when you start your sim racing career, I think you're missing out on a whole bunch of experiences that can help you improve and really hone your driving and racing skills. So I'm going to suggest three non-GT3 types of car that everyone, but especially those just getting started, should definitely check out. Crucially, I haven't picked these cars because they're the easiest to drive. Actually, some are really quite challenging. But each pick has a specific rationale behind it that should hopefully help you on your way as you take your first steps into the sim racing world. As ever, if you enjoy the video, leave a like and get subscribed to the channel so you don't miss any of the sim racing content we've got coming up. Let's get into it. Many people take one look at the headline specs of classic cars and don't give them another thought. Others hop in, find that the brakes don't work like a modern sports car, hit a barrier or two and never go back. But although challenging, classic cars don't have to be impossibly difficult. Try to avoid the temptation to go straight to Group C and instead look towards something like the NSU on screen or other older touring cars which provide a fantastic experience for those looking to hone their sim racing skills and enjoy very close and competitive racing. The lower speed of these classic cars, fewer gears and less faff with things like traction control and engine modes makes for a much purer racing experience where you can feel much more of what the car is doing and how weight is transferring in different parts of the circuit, key instincts to develop as you progress. Running in slower cars also gives you more time to build up your racecraft and master what can be challenging brake and throttle inputs, skills that will stand you in great stead to get the most out of quicker, more modern machines. And when you're ready, definitely check out the more muscular classic cars like Group C and Group 5, they're awesome. If you can master them, you'll be in a brilliant position to master almost any other car that exists. But to start with, I'd suggest new sim racers stick to cars like Race Room's NSU, the VW Scirocco or the Porsche Carrera Classic, featured on screen now, which is, for my money, one of the best cars in all of sim racing. For many, single-seater racing begins and ends with Formula 1, or maybe at a push F2 or IndyCar. This is, of course, a huge mistake. Some of the best sim racing is to be found in junior Formula cars, and Formula 4 and 3 cars provide a brilliant platform to learn lots about sim racing and improve your racing technique. These cars may be slower speed, but they're still downforce dependent cars. They're nimble on turning and liable to slide through slower corners if too much gas is applied. They're ideal for learning how to trail brake, the value of slipstreaming, how to modulate the throttle and of course, they also tend to have more sensitive damage models to cope with too. But they're also much more forgiving than their older sibling F1 counterparts, with over and understeer relatively simple to correct and they provide fantastic close racing to boot. iRacing's USF 2000 is a blast and is a D license series as well and of course the service also now offers the Formula V as a rookie car but my favourite has to be Race Room's F4 car. Check out some of my other race videos to show what a great time this car can be. There's a good reason the iRacing Road Course Rookies features the Mazda MX-5 Cup car, or why the BMW and Audi TT Cup cars feature so often in the Race Room Rookie servers. Spec series like these prioritise equal competition, allowing for a real focus on understanding the car itself and how to get the maximum from it. Each of these three examples are generally quite planted, but with the Audi and BMW in particular, they boast a decent amount of power as well. 
At first they may seem a little bit sluggish and perhaps even boring, but once you get into the groove you'll find that you can really push them. These cars fall into that category of being relatively easy to learn, but tough to master and you'll be shocked at how quick some people can go in these relatively slow cars. Overall they're very raceable, great for learning shorter and club circuits, and improving your racecraft in tightly packed grids. The Audi TT Cup even has push to pass, so it's a great car to get used to using overtaking aids early on in your sim racing career. More powerful cup cars do exist of course, and the ubiquitous Porsche 911 GT3 Cup, which features in just about every sim imaginable, has a notorious reputation for being challenging to master. So if you do decide to hop into something like that, make sure you're prepared to put the practice in to get on top of the car. So there you go, my picks for cars to get started with in sim racing outside of the ever popular GT3 class. Let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree and which you'd recommend. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, get subscribed to the channel for more and I'll see you on the next one.